helicopter operator. Have no fear, fellow citizens. The mediator is here. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of The Mediator with me, your host, Brian West. Here to give you the top eight headlines and developing news stories that made it this week. Now, as usual, to give you the top eight local headlines and developing news stories that made it first, followed by a movie clip, a skit, a trailer, or something that's going on in the community, or maybe some pictures. And then I'll give you the top eight international headlines and developing news stories that made it, folks. So let's waste no time. Welcome to March. Let's get to it. Story number one. $1.2 million waterline project in Hubbard. Hubbard is looking to improve the quality of its drinking water with a $1.2 million waterline project. The money will come from the American Rescue Plan funds and an Environmental Protection Agency loan. That's why story number one made it this week. Story number two. Property upgrades in Niles. Trumbull. Uh, the Tribune Chronicles has an article informing the public on how Niles has been awarded $20,000 from the Ohio History Connection for improvements to the Ward Thomas House. Now, four other properties in downtown Niles also made headlines after Ohio's demolition and site revitalization program approved $7.2 million for 181 projects folks this story is still developing that's why story number two made it this week story number three 11 million dollars plan that's a, the plan to revitalize downtown latonia a report by wfmj out of latonia explains how the village plans to start on an 11 million dollar upgrade project that will include moving utility line a uh, line telephone like like Utility lines like telephone poles, upgrades, restore a building facades, and redesign the streetscape to improve traffic and accessibility, according to the article. Now, the project focal the project's focal point aims to diversify the village's economy to improve the lives of residents, as stated by Latoya's mayor in the report. Folks, this story is still developing. That's why story number three made it this week. Story number four. Boardman trustees take a stand against recreational marijuana. WKBN released a report along with other news outlets on how Boardman trustees voted no to recreational marijuana dispensaries. Now, Boardman is not the only community to object. Holland also said no. The trustees felt that uh, the, the, they felt the somewhat booming marijuana industry is not a good fit for their communities, not a good fit. So they said, hey, no, they said no. That's why story number four made it this week because they said no. Big, big happy. Story number five, how the closing of some major stores are affecting local people. Residents in various communities are voicing their concerns about how some long serving stores are deciding to leave their communities. Now, one story out of Hermitage, PA that popped in the headlines two months ago has led community members to reach out to me, the mediator, to make this a top story because it's not just happening in Hermitage. Now, uh, they're talking about the J.C. Pennies that left the Shenango Valley Mall. Now, the local malls like Southern Park Mall and Eastwood Mall have also seen stores leave. Now, these stores are already restructuring and the COVID-19 meltdown may have been the put the dagger in their rec, uh, restructuring plans leaving them with no choice but to downsize thus leaving people without these stores now top stores like macy's bed bath and beyond sears jc pennies and toys r us and many more long-serving top name stores have stayed in recent headlines due to restructuring and downsizing plans to adjust to the current market conditions. Story so number five made it this week because people are getting upset because the jobs and on top of that, the convenience that these stores provide with space. Now there's empty spaces made it in this week. Big, big. Help. Story number six, gun firing remains a top concern in Youngstown. They are having a gun 
Field Day. Another gun story in Youngstown drawing more attention to the growing gun problems is uh, this is after police say, say that a house was struck near the front upstairs bedroom window where a woman was sleeping with her two children, according to a w WFMJ report. Now, this is not good news for a city seeking to attract more people because of population declines and on top of that, looking for a safe track people who, who are also looking for a safe place to live now gun stories have stayed consistent in uh, the past few weeks thus making this a top story always made it to the top two this week youngstown put down the guns big big story number seven of the top two local headlines and developing news stories that made this week extra extra read all about it does tito wear green ties does governor mike deron wear green shoes read all about it story number seven in march Landlords and tenants feuding is nothing new. Ooh. A property manager has uh, put living conditions and the woes of renting back in the local spotlight after she turned off the utilities for her uh, of her. She turned utilities off because her tenants were not paying. And so on top of that, she locked some of them in the basement. This is according to a report. It doesn't really say if they were paying or not, but it says they were having some rent problems. Now, obviously, they, they must not have been paying because the woman just snapped. Now, sometime back, if you remember a, lot, a while back, a story like this surfaced in New York when a landlord evicted his tenants by threatening them with a shotgun and dropping them off at a graveyard, the cemetery. Now, this story shows what tenants and landlords are going through. There was another story where a woman even moved in the backyard where her tenants was living just to get them to move out. Now, each story sounds the same because when tenants cannot pay their rent, it puts a strain on the landlord thus causing a lot of problems the landlord can't pay the mortgage can't pay the bank so there's a lot of there's a big learning gap here now the COVID meltdown the COVID-19 meltdown did not help and the fact that inflation caused a rise in utility bills and the cost of materials to improve properties all are rising the rates are rising along with rising interest rates all this stuff this stuff is getting expensive the bills so landlord says you got to pay up. Nobody can pay. The landlord snaps. Now this all added more fuel to the fire on on both ends. If you don't, this is what the material costs going up. The utility bills. This has added more fuel to the fire. Squatting stories have also stayed in the headlines, folks. The real the reality is that people are crying for more help, more money, and uh, it's adding a lot of problems. And it's all uh, showing the odds here of a landlord snapping because when they can't do anything they just take matters into their own hands this is this is uh, this is uh this is pretty deep now that's why story number seven also made it to the top this week because uh uh relations are getting sour with these property owners big big story number eight and the top local headline and developing new story do you feel lucky leprechauns gold rainbows Rainbows. I'm sitting at the end of the rainbow waiting for my gold on a local story. Top story. Story number eight. Expansion plans in North Jackson. Wow. North Jackson finally got, the, got at the top. TTM Technologies, which is a global technology solution manufacturing company, has made headlines because the company plans to expand in North Jackson by creating 50 that well, 50 jobs, not 50,000. <laughs> 50 jobs. That's made. That's what got the story at the top because this is a job creator. Now, according to the report, to a report in the Vindicator published February 27th by Ron Selick Jr., this will add nearly 2.3 million in new payroll. The company has even been approved for a 1.13 percent six-year tax credit by the Ohio Tax Credit Authority, estimated at $150,000. The jobs report is what got this story to the top, baby. Well, folks, those are our top eight local headlines in developing news stories that I made this week. I'll be right back with the top eight international headlines in developing news stories. So don't you go anywhere. You're the media with me, Brian West. I'll be right back. Tune in and don't forget to subscribe to Method 8 Inc. YouTube channel. You can also watch free public entertainment. And don't forget to show some support by visiting www.method8inc.com by buying something, clicking something, watching something, or just reading something. You can also sponsor a program as well. That's www.method8inc.com. Buy stuff, watch stuff, or read stuff. Hmm, what does method8inc.com Media Center have that I need? Small prints, 
event consulting, photography, business consulting, technical consulting, entertainment consulting, fundraising advice, event videography, movies, news, publishing, media, books, entertainment, acting, broadcasting, public relations, access to the visual and performing arts, ink and black ink refills, audio recording, graphic design, theater, minor computer and cell phone repair, and they're located at 5648 Market Street in Boardman, Ohio from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. every Monday through Friday. The list goes on and on. Method8inc.com. Buy stuff. Watch stuff or read stuff. Oh yeah! And yes, we are chipmunks. <laughs> Aunt Tasha, she said that you can be dumb and still make a lot of money. Don't be deceived, okay? Just get the work done. Get your get your work done, graduate, you'll be successful. Don't be deceived. I told you that. Now hit the books. Mom's not coming back, is she, Dad? Well, test scores again. Every teacher is in here day and night, and it's not our fault. Uriah aced her random proficiency test because you helped her. She's the first student in the city's district to ace that test. So did he pay? No, no. Who only paid that? Applied a pressure. <laughs> How can I protect myself? That's all I need for you to help me with. How do I protect myself? Oh, they're not going to hurt you. If this is what I get for being a good student and acing a test, I'd rather have fell. I never told you that being good would be easy. Clear target cannot miss. Home for his little girl. Take me. You're in danger. I won't tell you how this is going to end, Lauren, but my history professor once told me, in order to prevent a genocide, you first have to kill the dictator. Welcome back, welcome back. Now it's time to get to the top eight international headlines in developing news stories that made this week, folks. To start off March, we are talking about how far people will go. Folks, I remember seeing a story where a girl went so far to get revenge, to whoop some to whoop some tail. As she left school, she did not have a ride. Her mother came and picked her up. They are in poverty. The mother came and picked her up, drove her all the way to across town to fight somebody that she did not like. How far will people go? That's what our topic is beginning March. How far will you go to whoop some ass? Boot up! After somebody knocked you down, you can't walk away. Some digs inside you. You got to fight talking about this week in the Chronicles of Mediation. How far will you go after somebody to bust your chops? Let's get to these top stories real quick. That's what we're talking about this week. How far will you go? Let's waste no time, folks. Let's get to it. Story number one. A strike worth talking about in the field of academia. How far will you go after being pushed on the edge? But you go on strike. 3,000 York University academic workers decided to go on strike, according to CBC News. It appears that they're unhappy because the union representing them and the school failed to reach a deal on a new collective agreement. Now, this is out of Canada, but the story shows how hard it's getting for not only the United States, who is also facing some education uh, hurdles and some uphill climbs, but the surrounding nations are also having some problems to adjust to the current economic conditions. Folks, this story is still developing. How far will we go to even things out? Story number one, big, big head. Story number two, the rise in measles cases sounds the alarm on the cause. What is causing old diseases to resurface? 
How far will we go to get vaccinated to find a cure? Axios has a piece explaining how more children have come down with measles in Florida after the state surgeon general defied federal guidelines by not urging parents to vaccinate their children. Now, whatever the case may be, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is now recommending that unvaccinated students stay at home for three weeks after being exposed. This is not COVID, folks. This is measles. Now, CBS News reported that 200 students didn't show up for class due to the proclamation. Folks, this story is still developing. That's why story number two made it this week. How far will you go? Will you not get vaccinated? Will you get vaccinated? What will you do to prove a point? Maybe. Story number three. The work. To work. The work. To work. Or not to work. Do nothing. Sit down. Do nothing. Vox has a piece on how much older Americans are doing to save the working class because they are working longer and they're not retiring. The headline goes on to say that some want to and some have to work. The story made it in because the older generation continues to stress hard work and what it takes to keep a country afloat for the next people in line, the next workers in line coming up in a time where it's hard to find good help. The old people are pulling the chains, folks. That's why story number three made it this week. Story number four. The food prices are making major headlines. CBS News says that Americans are spending the biggest share of their income on food. This is data that crunches the numbers in a three-decade span. Woo. Now, the piece goes on to explain how Americans have spent more than 11% of their disposable income on eating. That's a lot of money that you don't have that you could be putting on your bills. Now, this story made it in to show how the price wars are staying in the headlines. Story number four made it in, folks. Well, folks, those are our top four international headlines and developing news stories that made this week. I'll be right back with the top, top four. So don't you go anywhere. You're the mediator. Be Brian West. I'll be right back. You've taken these people and put them in a fake reality. What are you doing? You must guard the citizens with your life. I have a feeling that Mother Time has started a war. The Lord of Escobar interfered. Every elite is going straight to hell. I think you're crazy. You've always been a little crazy. Wait till after the second moon. The imagination is our biggest weapon. <laughs> time you've spent with me so far? I see it so vivid, my enemies are livid Cause if I'm giving this life, you know I'm gon' live it And if my goal's ahead of me, you know I'm gon' get it If I got something you need, by God's grace, I'm gon' give it Stay humble, be wise and intuitive I trust my music implies my influences I see it so vivid, my enemies are livid Cause if I'm giving this life, you know I'm gon' live it In the Falling rain, falling rain, falling rain Let it come down and let it take away the pain, oh and we just doing our thing Wake up in the morning, ain't a day that is the same, no Falling rain, falling rain, falling rain Let it come down and let it take away the pain, no And we just doing our thing Wake up in the morning, ain't a day that is the same, no Falling rain For falling rain Falling rain For falling rain Welcome back. Welcome back. Now it's time to get to the top, top four international headlines and developing news stories that made us folks. We are talking about how far will people go? Vladimir Putin. The man has went to the extent to, to threaten that nuclear war. Decided to just start wiping out people in Ukraine because he didn't want no part of NATO. 
The brother has lost a lot of people. Ukraine has lost a lot of lost of people. United States is spending money. Everybody is spending money. Zelensky is all over the globe trying to get support for this war. People have lost it. You could have chose peace. Israel, Hamas, same thing. People have gone so far to prove a point. They go in killing all innocent people. Then all of a sudden, all these Palestinians are die dead. Gaza is a mess. How far will people go? Donald Trump lawsuits all over the place. The man wants to be president. He feels like he can save and all this other stuff that goes along with America. Being president. Won't back down. Won't walk away. Because he feels he can't. He feels there's too much at stake. He feels like he needs to please his voter base and he has to be president. He's even losing his properties and New York lawsuits all over the place. How far will people go? The Democrats will go as far as just they, they, they just they have to have power. They won't let go. These are old men. And they're still in the they want to be in the game. While young people are saying, wait, you guys are going to destroy everything. There won't be anything left for us. How far will people go, folks? Whew. I haven't made a song about it. You will go so far to punish me. You won't choose peace. Peace. If you chose peace, we could have lived much longer and loved much longer. But you chose to kill me. Whoo! How far Woo! will you go in March just to get lucky? Let's waste no time, folks. Let's get to it. Story number five. U.S. job numbers for a different from a different angle. Money Wise has a piece highlighted by Peter Schiff who says that U.S. job numbers are up only because Americans are forced to take th two to three job, two or three jobs. Now, this is after the economy added 353,000 jobs in January of 2024. Now, he goes on to say that the only reason that jobs are going up is because people are forced to take two or three due to price increases. So he's saying that's why they're choosing to take all these jobs. Now, he also makes the point that paychecks are not rising either. Now, this story is still developing as more economic data comes in. Now, get this. 8.1 million people held multiple jobs in January of 2024. That's up 7.8 million from a year ago. Now, the article goes on to mention some raw stats that show Biden is playing politics with his job numbers that shift uh, says are not true. That's what he says. Now, the article is extensive and is a must read for those looking for job numbers and economic data. So, I start number five, made of this week. Story number six Israel's stance against Hamas is bad on both ends. Israel's war with Hamas is causing a stir and a drain on Israel's economy. Israel's GDP fell. If you didn't check out the stats, and the ripple effect is already being felt. According to Vantage, that's a, that's a Indian news site. Now, the, the, the situation in Gaza is also a mess, according to an ABC News report with humanitarian aid workers saying that this is the worst situation that they've ever seen. It's so bad that, the, that a U.S. active duty Air Force member set himself on fire to protest. Why world leaders are choosing war in such harsh times remains a mystery and has already caused more growing global problems and a need for more mediators and diplomatic solutions folks this story is still developing that's my story number six i was made to the top two this week big big headline. story number seven of the top two international headlines and developing news stories that made this week folks how far will we go pushed by our wife pushed by that bully to get revenge. She's, she's cussing us out, fussing out. You should have got some, uh, some uh, food from the store. You didn't even get the price. Look how much you paid. Are we going to sit down and argue with or are we going to walk away? Story number seven. The data may be showing a positive side to immigration. Can't walk away from this issue, folks. Bloomberg has a data tracker showing where migrants are heading. 
It appears that migrants reaching the United States are heading to big cities like New York, Illinois, and Colorado. Axios says that Biden's immigration saga has a silver lining, though, stating that immigrants are coming to to the rescue for employers struggling with historically tight la this historically tight labor market. Now, the article also states that their cheap labor has lower lowered inflation in some in some sense well helps lower inflation in some sense to be accurate now foreign born workers now consist of nearly 19 percent of the labor force if you did not know now this is up from 17.3 percent when biden took office now according to the piece this these new arrivals will help the u.s economy grow by about seven trillion more uh, the next decade, causing a stir in minority communities already suffering with poverty. So this is almost like getting free labor or getting a discount on labor, folks. The Washington Post says that the economy is roaring and immigration is the key reason. That's why story number seven also made to the top this week. Big big. Story number eight in the top international headline and developing news story that makes week. And the Trump card was played. When the Trump card was played, it threw the opponent a ripple eye, and he made an ugly face. Oh, the Trump card. Oh, story number eight. Is now a good time for Ukraine to make a peace deal with Russia? Huh. We've already spent a lot of money. We've gone a lot real far. How far will we go for nothing? Go so far? Means nothing. Zelensky has been all over the world looking for help in his war with Russia, and it is not getting any easier. Russia is gaining ground and is even gaining economic strength, bartering raw deals with people like with places like North Korea. Putin has gifted Kim Jong Un with a new car and food aid in what appears to be an exchange for. Well, exchange for weapons, according to some sources, especially South Korea. Now, whatever the case may be, many see no other way for Ukraine but to get Putin to the table on a peace deal to calm the storm as aid and money dries up. Now, this story is still developing because it is eating away at the American Treasury, the pocketbooks of the world, to supply to Ukraine as Russia gains more troops, ammunition, and even more ec economic support. Now, Fortune says that Warren Buffett's son, Howard, has given Ukraine half a billion dollars. As King Solomon would say, everything in life is vanity. We fight wars only later on to fight more wars. So how far will we go to only realize that we too may die and we may regret the decisions that we made in the past? Well, folks, those are our top eight local and international headlines and developing news stories that I made this week. I hope you get some on today's program. I always get some done doing the research. As usual, I thank all the news journalists, the people on the front lines. Uh, you deserve all the credit, the media. I'm just the man navigating your stories to keep people informed. If you want to show us some support here at Method 8, it does not take much. All you have to do is visit the website on the screen, buy something, click on something, watch something, read something, or just sponsor program. Or you can stop at the store at 5648 Market Street to see my smiling face and buy something at the store. Well, folks, I am out of here. The store is at 5648 Market Street, Bourbon, Ohio. I'll see my smiling face. Well, folks, I'm out of here. I'll be back next week. Looking through over 200 or more stories to start off March to get almost through. I'm out of here. Have a good week, everybody. Thank you for tuning to the media. It'll be Brian West. Peace. Have no fear, fellow citizens. Have no fear, fellow citizens.